the most recent findings that we have on the new variant that was first described uh, by us on the 18th of December. Since then, it's almost a month and we've learned a lot more. So today is an update on that information. In our latest data from KwaZulu-Natal, 59 out of the 61 sequences from Professor Dulavera's lab came up with the new variant. This new variant is now the predominant virus spreading in our midst. Is the 501YV2 variant in the second wave spreading faster? In this paper, I'm, as I'm reading it, and I look at the 501 and the 417 mutations, and I see what he found they were doing. Doing studies or using free energy perturbation, he showed how these amino acids, which have changed, which lead to changes in the charge and the shape of the protein, he showed how the binding of the virus to the human cell had changed significantly. In particular, what he noted is that the virus and the spike protein now rotates about 20 degrees so that it's able to approach more deeply into the binding site so that its affinity and its ability to bind to the human cell is now stronger. And that's what enables it to become a more efficient virus in the way it transmits. And we're seeing that. We see it in the number of the, the, the proportion of tests that are positive. On the left-hand side is the daily average number of tests that are being performed. And on the right-hand side is the proportion of tests that are positive. You can see we went to a high of almost 32%, almost one out of three tests being positive, higher than we ever had in the first wave. What we have seen is that it spreads much faster. It's left to be seen whether it will end faster, but certainly it has spread much faster. In this study undertaken by colleagues at the London School, they found that the 501YV2 variant is 50% more transmissible than the previous variants we had in South Africa. This was done with mathematical modeling where they extrapolated what we should have seen in the second wave if we had the same variance and what the difference was. You can look at it another way. How many days did it take to reach 100,000 cases in each of the first and second waves? Well, in the Western Cape, it was 50% faster. It took 107 days to get to 100,000 in the Western Cape in the first day, first wave, but only 54 days in the second wave. In KwaZulu-Natal, it's 39% faster. It took 54 days in the first wave and 33 days in the second wave. The B117 variant, which has a sole RBD mutation at position 501, is 56% more transmissible than pre-existing variants. But interesting in this study that was undertaken by our colleagues at the London School, they found no evidence that it was causing any more severe disease. So let's go to the next question. So is the 501YV2 variant more severe? The B117 doesn't look so. What do we know about 501YV2? Well, let's look at the data. Again, just looking at the same 100,000 cases, did we see more admissions in the first wave versus the second wave? The answer to that is no, they're pretty similar. Is there any evidence on whether the COVID-19 vaccines are effective or not against this variant? I'm sorry to tell you, not yet. Many, many scientists across the world are working on this. I'm in direct communication with several of them. We don't yet have an answer. We're expecting an answer pretty soon, and there's much to speculate on this, but we want to see the actual data. It's not yet available. Aren't we worried that, you know, should we be changing our vaccine approach? In my view, the answer is no. 
Not at this stage, not with the evidence we have at this point. Vaccines that we see with the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines at 95% efficacy are amongst the most effective vaccines that we have for any disease. If you take, for example, the measles vaccine, this is comparable with that, one of our most successful vaccines. So we're certainly looking at pretty high efficacy vaccines and they achieve a critically important goal, which is they reduce clinical illness and hospitalization. But I have to say that the vaccine rollout is not going to be easy or quick. It's a mammoth logistical task that's going to need all hands on deck. With some caveats, because some of the data I presented are from preprints and not yet published and peer reviewed, and some of the data still has some residual confounding. Despite those caveats, let me make some conclusions. The first is this virus is spreading about 50% faster. And so our second wave is faster than our first wave, in, at least in South Africa's coastal provinces, where we know this variant to be dominant. The current data suggests the new variant is not more severe. And the published convalescent serum studies suggest that natural antibodies are less effective with viral escape facilitated by the 484, 501, and N-terminal mutations. But vaccine antibodies are different, and they may or may not be impacted. I will not even attempt to speculate on that matter. I'll wait for the data. And certainly, we have no empiric evidence yet on whether vaccines are effective against this variant. Those studies are well in the way. I want to caution that we should stick with calling the variant we have in South Africa the 501YV2 variant, which is its name. Please, let's not call it the South African variant. Just like, you know, we don't want to call the B117 variant the UK variant. They are variants across the world. And even if they found in one country, we don't even know if that's where they originated from. And they will rapidly spread to many countries. The B117 is now in almost 50 countries. The 501YV2 variant is already available in more than 10 countries. Just like how we objected when the US president called SARS-CoV-2 the China virus, we should not call this variant by its country. 